Okay, now that we have a little better understanding of the diagrams and how they work, first thing we're going to do is we're going to we're going to use the left side here as our like our known good. So we're going to co uh, collect some data over here, and we're going to kind of compare it over there to the right hand side, which is the one that's given us the which did give us the code a week ago. Now, if you can see right here, I've got the wheel speed sensor is disconnected. Got a couple of T-pins in here, and I've got uh, what we're going to do right now on the first test is we're going to measure our resistance. So let me give you a shot of that. Okay, we are measuring 1.0751 kilo ohms, or 1,075.1 ohms. Okay, so we're going to write this data down. Okay, now that we have got our first resistance check which was 1075 ohms I believe here's what we want to say about resistance if you're checking resistance on a coil and it doesn't matter what type of coil you're you're measuring ignition coils ABS sensors transformers motors you just gonna have to keep in mind that when you are checking the resistance the only thing that you can say for 100 percent certainty is that that winding is not open okay now now you're saying what do I mean by all this okay you look over here we got a, a reading of 1075 okay is that good well, I'm assuming it's good, but do I know it's 100% good? No, I don't know. And I can say that it's probably good because the computer is uh, happy with it. And if the computer is happy, then, then I'll be happy. But look here. Here's, why, here's how, why I'm stressing about resistance. Don't go 100% into it and check it. And even if your resistance reading is in spec, a lot of times they'll give you uh, readings that if you're from here to here, well, I'm, you know, I'm right in there. I'm right in the middle. And then you'll say, well, you know what? I, it's good. And you, you move on. Well, it can still be bad. You can have a shorter turn or two. Let me illustrate what I'm talking about there. We go back to this coil of wire. All right. Now, I don't know how many turns it's actually inside this ABS sensor, but let's imagine that we have... Oh, I don't know. Let's say 2,000 turns. So I've got 2,000 wraps on this here magnet. Now, now this one turn of wire from one turn to the next turn to the next to the next, all of this wire, every bit of it, is supposed to be insulated. Now, if, it's, if it wasn't, then you'd have a short from one turn to the next turn. Now, they usually, they, they like this magnet, say, uh, this coil of wire, it's probably like a motors. I haven't opened up a sensor, so I cannot say 100% sure, but my guess is it's using magnet wire, very thin wire, probably 28, 30 gauge wire. And what they'll do is they will, and it's like a motor, they will coat it with a lacquer, okay? That lacquer is gonna insulate the wire from one turn to the next. So basically the whole wire is insulated from one, so when you put it together, there is no short. Insulated all the way down from one turn to the next. Now let's say, let's say that the sensor gets hot, draws too much current, okay? So now let's say that, uh, let's say that this turn right here gets a little uh, breaking down, the lacquer comes off. Now we're down to the bare copper. Now, let's say because it's sitting there rubbing up next to that one, it's, it's all right there together. Now this one here, that's heated up. Now that's been started. So it's just a chain effect, okay? But let's say to start with, it's just these two right here. That's where, that's where our problem area is to start with, right? So now right in here, this problem area, okay, it's starting to break down, and now we have a shorted turn from one turn to the next. Now, now that right there is going to disrupt in how much voltage you're going to get out of here. In other words, your computer probably ain't going to be too happy because the voltage now is going to be lower than what it should be. The more turns you get shorted, the lower your voltage is going to go. Remember, the more turns you have, the, the higher your voltage will go. So if you start shorting these here turns out, then you don't have as many turns. Therefore, your voltage is going down. Now, when you put your ohmmeter on there, you're going to be looking at it, and you'll see, 
Well, let's see, I got 1,075 ohms. Wow, that's pretty good. That's, okay, my sensor is good. No, your sensor can still be bad. Because if you have a shorted turn like this, two of them together, let's say, your ohm meter is not sensitive enough to pick up, say, 0 0.005 ohms of, of a shorted resistance that's going to be less. It's never going to pick it up, and you're never going to know. So, how can you really, really say for sure if your sensor is good? I think the only way to really be sure is to put a scope on it and look at the signal. Look at the amplitude, see how much uh, voltage output it's putting out, and watch it. And if you're looking at it, and then you know at that point, right then, it's good. And then you can make some really good diagnosis and compare it with one that you know is good and go to the next one over there. And then you can see that your ampl amplitude is less. So I'm doing the resistance check because a lot of times it does have a, it does have a play because if you go to one sensor and you say it's good, and it could be, let's just say it's a thousand ohms. Okay, sensor is good. I go over to my other sensor to make a comparison. I think it's bad. And when I compare it and look at it, well, it's 200,000 ohms. Well, now obviously, when you get that far up in resistance, then you know you got a bad sensor. Or if you read OL, open, so you know that's a bad sensor. My point is that just because that you read a, a, a resistance and it's in spec, does not mean 100% that that sensor is good because, like I said before, you could have a shorted turn in there and your ohm meter is never going to pick it up and you still got a bad sensor, okay? But like I said, it does have a, uh, you know, it does have a use when your sensor does get way out of spec, you know, like if you get corrosion built up in there or something of that sort or, you know, then if you see a very high resistance, as I pointed out, then it's a valid test, you know. But don't don't take it 100% that if you got a good resistance, then automatically, yes, my sensor is good. Just keep that in mind. Okay. Okay, now being how we have the connector already apart, okay, let's go ahead and take advantage of measuring some voltage. We should have a bias voltage down here. My guess is we got a white wire, we got a black. The white wire was a signal input, okay? Just as a little reminder, so you can see. Come down here. There's our white wire. And there it is, speeds, uh, speed signal input, I believe what it is. Yeah, speed signal input. Okay, so I'm going to stab the white wire. And I'm going to back probe that, stick it in, okay. Now I'm going to turn the switch on. Okay, now I want to make sure that we set our voltmeter to DC volts. Now I'm just going to grab a ground. I'm pretty sure that's a good one right over here. Just give you a shot to where I'm at. Okay. Just grabbing hold of a just grabbing hold of a brake line. I think that's going to give us a good grill. In fact, I've already, I've already checked that, so I know it's a good ground. Alright, so now, let's come back to our T-pin on the white wire. We should have a bias voltage here, should be 5 volts. Okay. Had to restab it again to get a reading. Okay. Now let me give you a shot of that. So as you can see, we have five volts out here on the white wire. Okay. Now we're going to move it over to the black wire. By the way, we're writing all this down now. Okay. Now we're going to take, we're going to move the T-pin over. 
And this time we're going to put it over on the black wire. Okay. All right. So now get you try to get it out of shadows there. Okay, you can see it's 0 .0484 volts. Okay, going to write that one down. Okay, now that we have those two voltages with the connector unplugged, now we're going to plug it up. Now we should see those voltages drop because of the load from the wheel speed sensor. Now I'm still, I'm still on the black wire this is a signal return. So we got uh, 2.32 volts. Okay. Okay, now we're going to move it over the TPN to the white wire. Now remember, the white wire is the one that supplied the 5 volts. So I suspect that this voltage should be higher than the previous voltage. Now, if you look right there, we have 2.6 volts. Okay, now we got we got some voltages off of our left front speed uh, wheel sensor here, and we're going to assume it's a known good since we didn't get a code off of there. Now you're probably wondering yourself, hey Terry, what's going on with these voltages? Why are they dropping all over the place like that? Okay, remember I said in the very beginning that you need to understand how circuits work before you can troubleshoot anything. Otherwise. What's the point of getting voltages if you don't understand what it's trying to tell you? So that's what we're going to do right now. So we're going to try to illustrate what's going on there. All right, let's start. Let's start with the EBCM, Electronic Brake Control Module. Well, this here module is providing that voltage that bias voltage out there to this wheel speed sensor. There's our female connector. It's on the harness side. Okay. Now you remember this one right here? This was the signal return. This one up here was a signal high input, I believe it was. So let me put that right here. Signal high input. Just put a little separation in there. Okay. Now, when we had the speed sensor disconnected, we had 5 volts out here. And over on this wire, we had 0 0.04 volts. Okay. Now, when we hook the speed sensor up, this is our male, okay, remember, here's our coil of wire that's in the wheel speed sensor, and once we did that, then our voltage dropped. This voltage became 2.6 volts, and then this voltage right here became 2.6 three two volts okay why 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 did it do that okay there's only one way that this here voltage will drop like this okay there has to be internally inside the EBCM there is a resistor okay now on the other side of this resistor there's five volts okay now, now that we have the sensor hooked up, now we have current flow. Comes around and returns. Okay. Now when we have current flow, now we're going to have a voltage drop across this resistor. Okay, now let's look out here. We've got 2.6 volts right here. Now if we take 2.4, that will give us 5 volts. That means 2.4 volts is dropped across this resistor internally. Okay. Now, over here, 
we see that we have 2.32 volts. Now, the difference between 2.6 and 2.32, okay, y'all forcing me to do some subtracting here. Okay, that's five. Point 0.28 volts. That means across our wheel speed sensor, we have point 0.28 volts dropped across this wheel speed sensor. Now, how can the computer figure out what's going on with the sensor or the wires? So, internally in the EBCM, at this point right here, this point of the wire on this side of the resistor is the same point, correct? From here to here. So internally inside, the computer, probably going to a differential op amp, is going to look at this voltage. So whatever happens out here, the computer knows what's happening internally. Now let's say that the wheel speed sensor was to open. Or if we had an open out here. Or maybe an open in the connector. Or an open over here on this connector. And the point is, we had an open. Now our normal voltage of being 2.6 volts See, we already know what's going to happen. This voltage is going to rise to 5 volts. Well, the computer knows that 2.6 is happy when it sees that voltage. Now, that's probably a little bit of a margin in there, but when it gets up to 5 volts, it knows right off the bat that there is an open in this here wire. And then here comes the ABS code. Okay? Now, what happens if this wire was to short? Well, now this voltage has gone down to zero volts. Well, zero volts is way off from 2.6 volts. That's the norm. Now that zero volts is sitting right over here. Now the computer knows that that's not right, so it knows there's a short out there on the line. Okay? Now, the same thing, you know, we could be looking at uh, this and taking advantage of it by looking at these voltages ourselves. For example, if we know if we know that 2.6 volts is what it likes and if we know that 2.32 volts is what it should be down here, right, then we can monitor one of these voltages here and if we see this voltage fluctuate or this one, doesn't matter which one we get on, then we know that there's a problem, let's say, in the connector or a harness. Let's say that you take a harness and you sit there and move it and wiggle it and jiggle it and play around with the connectors. You're monitoring the voltage. If you see the voltage change, then you know you've got a problem. So, if you're over here and you're monitoring this point and you got your voltmeter set up over here, and you see this here voltage and you see it go up to 5 volts, what do you know? You know you got to open, right, in this wire. Okay? If you see the voltage go down to zero and you're flickering, flickering the cables and, you know, in the wiring harness and you see the voltage change, it goes down to zero, then, okay, then you got to, this wire is, is shorting to ground. So then you can investigate it a little bit further. We're going to do the, um, we're going to duplicate the uh, test over on the other side. We're going to go through it real quick, make a comparison, and then we'll come back, and then I'm going to do the, uh, put the voltmeter on here. Uh, the meter I've got has got a record mode on it. Uh, if you've got a min-max uh, on your voltmeter, then that'll be great. You can use that, and you can move the cables around, move the harness around, and then you could come back later, and then you could check your min-max to see if, uh, see if anything changed on you. And then that way you can... That way you can find out, is there a problem somewhere in this wire, you know, like a loose connection, okay? So, so that's where, that's where we're at right now.